Welcome to Red in April Off-Grid. We're building a passive energy off-grid home in the Arizona desert. We're trying to keep costs as low as possible, reuse materials wherever we can, and we're doing all the work with our own four hands. This week we're working on drywall and insulation again. We're making good progress. The first third of the house, which is kind of the guest side, we have all the drywall pretty much hung and got some of the mudding and sanding done. Here I am vacuuming out the bathroom. I've finished a sanding in here and I'm just going along sucking up some of that extra dust before it gets blown into the air. And April's back to working on insulation. She's putting in those large bats of that 10 inch thick R30 insulation in the ceiling there. And it's really exciting to, to get this insulation in and get this drywall up. It just feels like a, a big step in the, in the progress of this home. April's working on the insulation here. And as you can see, she's tucking it up underneath that wall and kind of in and around these beams. One thing that she tries to be really careful about is not to get the, the insulation folded over. As you're tucking it in, it'll, it can tend to get caught on things and kind of bunch up or fold over. And you don't really see it unless you're really paying attention, sticking your hand in there and making sure it's flat, which she's really careful about. This scaffolding has been working out. We can move it around and it makes a great platform for April. I'm working on the closet here and I'm drywalling in this opening and putting those metal corner pieces. All of our closets we're doing curtains for instead of doors. We've actually done that in previous homes and really liked the livability of curtains on the closet. Really liked how they work, so we're doing that here. Moving on to doing the taping in the guest bedroom here, I like to use this sticky fiberglass tape that you just stick on. I know a lot of the professionals use a paper. I, I just never developed that skill set. It seems difficult to me, so I just stick with the easy fiberglass mesh. And I'm moving on to doing a little mudding here in this room while April moves on to the far wall. She's doing some insulation on that wall. She's using an R13 insulation that's the right width to go in between these 16 inch on center studs. And she just kind of attaches it at the top, gets it to the right length and, and cuts it. It comes in a long continuous roll. Our home design is intentionally very simple and we didn't do a lot of fancy stuff with offsets or anything in the walls, but that area that I'm working in now is the one spot that we did. So instead of just a straight wall going across there, we just didn't need that much space in the bathroom. We had plenty of space to do an inset there and create some additional space for the kitchen area. So we decided to go ahead and, go ahead and do that there. It'll add some interest and there's plenty of room there for a refrigerator and a, some additional shelving and storage. Well, the taping is done in the guest bedroom and I'm moving on to mudding here. Doing drywall requires that I change tasks several times during the day. Sometimes I'll be hanging drywall and then mudding and then sanding kind of different parts of the house all in the same day. But uh, it's kind of fun. It keeps, it keeps it moving and keeps it more interesting. April's been working hard at insulating this big ceiling. And it creates a lot of this dust, and as you can see, she's all suited up there. What you can't see is we have the evaporative cooler going, and so that's creating a lot of airflow to kind of move those air particles away, but she's still right there in it, and so she's wearing that lung protection. It's really important to take the time to wear the proper safety gear to protect yourself from the stuff that you're exposed to when you're doing this kind of construction. There's a couple dangers. There's acute danger of, you know, getting something in your eye or having something hit you, cut you, scrape you, that sort of thing. And so you need to wear protection from that. And we try to wear glasses and those types of safety gear for that, gloves. Then there's also the chronic or long-term cumulative effects of exposure to toxins or to fibers or different things that you're exposed to in these environments. One of the biggest dangers is the lungs, whether it's some kind of a chemical vapor or a particulate that's in the air like a fiberglass particulate or concrete uh, particles that are in the air. They're, they're damaging to the lungs and it's cumulative damage you know, that builds up over time. There's the old expression that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, that totally does not apply <laughs> when it comes to this type of damage. You know, what doesn't kill you makes you weaker when you get older. And so when you're, when you're young, you can breathe this stuff in. You don't notice it. Maybe it doesn't even make you cough, but it'll come back to get you later in life. And so it's worth taking the time now to protect yourself. We even have different masks that we use for different tasks. So when we're doing stuff like this insulation, April is using a, just a strap-on mask. It's, it's a little cheaper, but still a good quality paper mask. When I'm 
working with really fine particulates like when I'm sanding and I'm getting this stuff this dust is just raining down or when I'm grinding on the concrete and all these fine particles are just in the air all around me then I wear a really good mask it's more of a respirator mask with a P100 filter and so anyway it's just something that we've learned over time that it's worth worth taking the time to wear the right type of safety protection. This is in memory of my dad who passed away five years ago from a lung condition called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. He was only 67 years old. He also suffered from severe hearing loss from growing up on a farm and driving an old tractor that didn't have a muffler. Well, back to the build. April's got enough of the insulation done that I'm ready to start hanging drywall on the ceiling. And I've got this wonderful lift here to use for that. Here I am drilling out a hole for the recessed lighting. Took some consultation between me and April to figure out where we wanted these recessed lights to be exactly. And then of course I have to mount the box in and get that all ready before we go. When April's around, she gives me a hand to get the board up on the, up on the lift. I, I can do it myself, but it's always nice to have a hand if she's around. And the lift just makes it easy get it up and get it in place you know i've been really surprised with this lift at how accurately i can place these with the lift i mean you can get it to within an eighth of an inch i mean just right exactly where you want it uh, it's pretty neat you just kind of learn to use it over time you can kind of grab the the bar and shake it a little bit and and get it precisely where you want it and then it holds it in place while you get your screws in this lift even works great on these slope ceilings. They're, they're not completely level up top, but there's enough play in the system and it's meant, you know, built to where you can lean it down. And so the slope ceiling isn't a, a problem for this at all. It works great. You can still get it nice and tied up against the ceiling, even on a fairly slope ceiling. So that's nice. You know, it just really amazes me how inexpensively we can build these types of a piece of equipment you know i paid 185 dollars for this thing shipped to my house and it's a really sophisticated amazing piece of equipment for only 185 dollars it, it just amazes me what you can get these days in terms of the quality of equipment for the price april's garden is doing amazing we're already starting to eat fruit from it the radishes were the first thing to come out of the garden and they are delicious there's nice bulbs on the bottom and we're also eating the greens the greens are delicious uh, april cooks those down and we've been eating those so it's just great to get fresh produce from the garden already here's a quick look at our son's hyper adobe build you can see he's collecting his dirt from this area here and is digging a nice it'll actually be a pond during the monsoon season after the build is over so it's kind of a double purpose there but he's coming up really nicely on the walls he's actually up high enough that he's ready for a window so I helped him build a window frame while we we're at it we decided to put a 12 inch board on top of the door frame and the window frame just to make the frame a little wider and to give it some more reinforcement well we're about ready to put the drywall up on the kitchen wall and before we do that we wanted to pressure test the propane lines that are going to be in the wall back there and make sure that there's no leaks and so we pressurized the system got it up to a pressure made sure that it was holding and went and did some leak testing i sprayed every joint with a soapy water to make sure that it doesn't blow out bubbles it's actually quite visible if there's a leak it'll start bubbling out of that leak and so we carefully checked every connection make sure that that there weren't any leaks with that done we're ready to get back to the insulation and drywall you can see i'm working off of a stack of drywall that's just leaning up against the side i actually really like working on it with it just leaning up against we actually had some pieces of insulation there that kind of provide some padding between it and the wall and i just bring in a few pieces with april's help maybe four or five pieces and work those down and it actually works really good just to have it standing up against the wall it's actually surprisingly easy to mark and cut when it's in that orientation i've done it also when it was laying flat on the ground which wasn't too bad either but this is actually a little nicer a little easier to work and now bringing this piece over to hang it this one has quite a few little cuts and detail cuts in it but seems to be fitting okay i'm still working on my ability to get the the little cuts for the outlet boxes right i, I still struggle with that a little bit but i feel like i'm getting better as time goes goes by things get pretty messy and so we try to sweep up every now and then also it gets it out from underneath the wall so when you put that new piece of drywall down it goes all the way to the floor <laughs> it can actually get in your way it's been pretty warm we have 102 degrees outside with 10 percent humidity so it's very dry and very hot 
Inside with the evaporative cooler on, it's pretty nice. We're at 78 degrees with 32% humidity. So 32% humidity is still pretty low. So even with the evaporative cooler on, it's still fairly dry in here and it's keeping it nice and cool. Well, it looks like a bit of a wreck in here, but we're making good progress. Uh, April's almost finished up the ceiling insulation in here. She's working on the last row. Basically, every time she adjusts the height of the scaffolding, she moves it along the width of the room at that same height because it's you know tapering up, and then she'll raise it up and, and move it over and then go across the room again. Well, she's on her last run getting that last row of insulation in, so almost finished up with this big space, so that's a big milestone. Meanwhile, I've been drywalling my way across the kitchen and I've made it to this entryway closet over here and I'm bringing in some more materials so that I can finish out the inside of the closet. So that's always a lot of small detail work in a tight space, but it'll be nice to get this part done. These closets are a good place to use the scrap material, the pieces that are too small or to use anywhere else. I really try to use the waste material as much as I can and minimize the waste everywhere I can. So I save the smaller pieces and try to find places to use them. And these closets for good are good for that. This closet in particular is a coat closet. It's where we can put our outdoor clothing and shoes and stuff and have easy access right by the front door. We're about ready to do some mudding in here and we made a special trip into town to get some pre-mixed mud. And it turns out that it was expired. It was really dry because it was too old and very frustrating so we had to load it all back up and take it back into town to exchange it. This mud was dated about a year old and it was way too dry to use. We'll show you what the temperatures are inside right now. So we're at 76 degrees. We've had a range of 67 degrees at night and 81 during the day. Here is the ceiling with insulation. And then we have a section here that is not insulated. So there is without. It's June 8th, about 10.30 in the morning. Red's making really good progress. I got the whole ceiling insulated yesterday. Finished this all off, so now he can finish the ceiling. So here's my elderberry, it's doing good. I put some mulch around it. I put this around it more so for wind protection than really for shade, although I think the shade is helping it too. Just keeps the soil more moist. So here is my Afghan pine. I have planted it on the end of the house here to hopefully give some shade. We had some leaf cutter ants stealing a lot of the needles. So I put this styrofoam plate at the bottom and that seems to have done the trick, keep them from climbing up. So here you can see where it's planted. It should, as it gets bigger, give some shade to the end of the house. So this mesquite tree is already giving some shade in the afternoon. So we're gonna give it some water and hopefully it'll grow nice and big and give even more shade so my cedar tree here is doing well. I put it here to kind of give a little shade to the parking area in the afternoon. And so here is our pond. It's amazing how much stuff is growing in here even though it's been super dry. We pretty much haven't had any rain in about 10 months. We did have one small rain in the spring which I think kind of helped green things up a bit. But it's kind of amazing how much stuff is still growing in here even though our Winters are super dry and didn't get much rain this spring. But apparently the water is still there because there's a lot of stuff growing here. It's like we have a little baby yucca coming up right there. And then also mesquite tree. We'll probably get rid of that. But eventually get some stuff planted on the swales and or the berms. And then here's a little scan around. Well, I'm making some good progress on the ceiling. It's going up pretty fast. I'm working on the light that's going to be above the desk. We plan to have a desk over up against this concrete wall on this side. And we have a light that's going to be over here. It's kind of special for that area to make sure we have good lighting for the desk. I'm just connecting it, making sure it works. It looks good. And now I'm ready to move on. 
It's funny how a new tool can change your perspective on something. I've been dreading this ceiling forever because it's this, this huge, horrible, above-your-head work space that I was going to have to do. And with this lift, it's actually something that I've actually been looking forward to. And now that I'm doing it, I'm really enjoying it. It's turned it from something dreadable into something that's actually fun. And so I'm having a great time here working on the roof. It's going incredibly fast. And so I'm almost done already. This room is really looking different. Um, it's amazing the, the difference that getting on the drywall makes in a place. It just really makes it look like a home instead of just a, a, a bare structure. The only thing that was a bit of a pain is working on this gravel floor. So it's wonderful working on the concrete because it's got, you know, wheels and they roll great. But on this gravel floor, it was rough. I had to kind of put my foot under it and pick it up and move it over using my leg and my foot. It was a bit of a challenge moving it along this gravel and, to be honest, a, a pain because any type of movement was difficult to do. And so that was the only trouble, though, and it, it was definitely overcomable and, and still a fun process to use. I might mention here that this the reason that we have all this gravel in our house I know some of you that maybe haven't been following along for for a while may may be wondering but so the, the reason that this gravel is still exposed is because we plan to come in later and cover this section of the floor with packed earth so this will be a natural earthen floor but we want to wait to do that until most of the construction is done uh, because we don't want the earthen floor to be damaged once we put it down I might also mention that we will be putting down insulation first before we put the earth down, so the earthen floor will be thermally isolated from the floor and therefore will act as thermal mass. Well, I'm ready to install the last piece on the ceiling here. This expanse is almost covered. So I might also mention too that I was wondering how well those 1x4s that I used as strapping work that I'm screwing these sheets into. And it's actually working out great, better than expected. The ceiling is going on nice and smooth and those straps seem to be just the thing. I was worried that they would be a little bit too thin, but they're not. They're, they worked out really well. The last piece is finally up. I'm just lowering this down. I'm going to lug it out of the way with my foot, move it over so I can get my ladder in and get the last few screws in and then it'll be completely done. Well, I'm jumping back over to working on the guest room. We didn't get much footage of it, but I got it all mudded and now I'm sanding the ceiling here. Sanding the ceiling is definitely the most difficult part for me, and the reason is it's just really strenuous on the shoulders. You have to exert pressure in an upward direction. Also, I have to get really close, get my face right up next to it so that my arms aren't too high above my head. I have some shoulder injuries just from some sporting activities in my youth and just a lot of wear and tear over the years. So being the middle-aged guy I am, my shoulders are getting tired they're getting old and this is really hard on my shoulders and what I've decided is that I need to go ahead and invest in an electric sander to make this easier I just don't think I can do the entire roof of the living room uh, I don't think my shoulders are going to hold up to it so I need some mechanical help and so I intend to order a sander and get that coming Just about finished up in here and now I'm moving on to mudding in the kitchen area. I'm starting on the wall here. Next I'll move on to the ceiling. There's a lot of mudding to be done here. I'm just using a ladder and kind of working my way across. Going through a lot of that mud. I use the pre-mixed mud just because it's easier. I know a lot of people probably mix their own and that's a good way to do it too. But this pre-mixed stuff is just so smooth that it helps me. It, it's easy to to apply. You don't get the lumps uh, that cause streaks when you drag it across with your trowel. So to me, it's worth buying the premix stuff just because it's already so smooth and just saves me a step. While I'm working on that, April is finishing up the insulation on this southern wall, and that's the last she has to insulate for this room, so it's coming along real nice. We're almost done with this main living area. Well, we happened to look out the window and saw a quail family coming, and so April tried to get some video of it. They're so cute. I love this time of year when the quail have their chicks and you can see them occasionally. We just really enjoy them. Here you can see there's a lookout. They always have a lookout that's kind of watching out for the rest of the group. And then there's another adult with the chicks. Um, in this particular group of chicks, we, we counted 21. So there was two adults that were watching after at least 21 chicks. I could be a little off, but I counted at least 21. And so, and we see them. They move all over the property. They Right now they're at a watering dish that April keeps out for the animals 
getting a drink and then they'll move on uh, to to the trees and they like to do a little dust bath by the trees anyway we just love seeing these creatures around and this type of year in particular is when they they have their their young out and it's just always really a pleasure to see them moving around it's really hard to get videos of these guys here's a video that's just through the window because we saw them coming and we're inside the house trying to get some video of them so it's not the best video but they're really hard to catch april was trying to sneak up on them the other day and get a good video shot but the lookout she didn't see the lookout the lookout was up on the very tip of a very tall yucca stem and kind of hidden up there and he saw her coming and alerted the young and the other male and or the other adult that was with the chicks and they ran off so they're really hard to catch uh, but we love them anyway we we got a little video and we thought we'd show you yeah they kind of went around and visited each of the trees got a drink did their little dust bath thing and then just ran off into the bushes mm -hmm. 